Yeah. I could just start singing and then figure it out, yeah. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadadi Gopi Janavala Bhagiri Varadadi Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Janna Vala Bhagiri Varadadi Kopi Janna Vala Bhagiri Varadadi Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachadi Yamuna Tira Vanachadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihadi Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihadi Kopi Janna Vallabha Giri Varadadi Kopi Janna Vallabha Giri Varadadi Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari 
Yamuna Tira Vanachare Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Prem Sikaho, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada, Shri Advaita Gadadha, Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vindaki Jai, Shri Shri Radha, Krishna Gopa Gopana, Shama Kun, Radha Kun, Giridha, Giridha Vridhan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai, Navadit Dham Ki Jai, Ganga Imunamai Ki Jai, Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakti Vindaki Jai, All Glories to the Symbol Devotees, All Glories to the Symbol Devotees, All Glories to the Symbol Devotees, Agwais Shri Guru and Shri Guranga. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a two-part, two-part class. We could read some verses uh, from the fifth canto. <clears throat> fifth canto is entitled "The Creative Impetus." Chapter 26, The Hellish Planets, and we'll, we'll be reading from text 28. And then uh, we could read from the first canto, Detour. We'll take a detour from hell for a little while. And then we'll resume our tour of hell tomorrow. And uh, we should be finishing our tour of hell um, next week. So... Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Five twenty six twenty eight. Yes. Would you like to change yeah. your better for me? Yes, we have Amitam Vadati Sakshe, Dravya Vinamaye, Dane, Vaka, Tanchit, Savai, Pratinarake, Vichimat, Adakshida, Nidavakashe, Yojana Sato, Triad, Gidimur Nag, Sampatyate, Yatajalam, Ivastalam, Asma Pristam of Abhasate, Tadavichimat, Tilaso, Vishiyamana Sadiro, Namriyamana, Punararo, Pito, Nipatati. Okay, a translation, commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A person who in this life bears false witness or lies while transacting business or giving charity is severely punished after death by the agents of Yamaraj. Such a sinful man is taken to the top of a mountain 800 miles high and thrown head first into the hell known as Avicimat. This hell has no shelter and is made of strong stone resembling the waves of water. There is no water there, however, and thus it is called Avicimat, waterless. Although the sinful man is repeatedly thrown from the mountain and his body broken to tiny pieces, he still does not die but continuously suffers chastisement. Any, this is text 29, any, any Brahmin or Brahmin's wife who drinks liquor is taken by the agents of Yamaraj to the hell known as Aya Pana. This hell also awaits any Chatriya Vaishya or person under a vow who in illusion drinks Somaras. In Aya Pana, the agents of Yamaraj stand on their chests and pour hot melted iron into their mouths. Purport. One should not be a Brahmin in name only and engage in all kinds of sinful activities, especially drinking liquor. Brahmanas, Chatris, and Vaishyas must behave according to the principles of their order. If they fall down to the level of Shudras, who are accustomed to drink liquor, they will be punished as described herein. <clears throat> all right, we'll read some more. A low-born, uh, an abominable person who in this life becomes falsely proud, thinking, I am great, and thus fa fails to show proper respect to one more elevated than he by birth, austerity, education, behavior, caste, or spiritual order. 
is like a dead man even in this lifetime, and after death he is thrown, into, thrown head first into the hell known as Chara Kardama. There he must suffer great tribulation at the hands of the agents of Yamaraj. Purport. One should not become falsely proud. One must be respectful toward a person more elevated than he by birth, education, behavior, caste, or spiritual order. If one does not show respect to such highly elevated persons but indulges in false pride, he receives punishment in, in <clears throat> Chara Kardama. All right, so tomorrow's verse will be 31. <laughs> well, you know, this, it's, all of these are quite intense, but. Badr Kali, tomorrow. Om Gyanati Vedanta Sya Gyananjana Shalakya Chakshulam Vaditam Miritas Mai Shri Guru Veda Maha Makam Karita Vachalam Pangam Langai Tegadim Yaki Padam Ham Vande Shri Guru Ndiritani Lam Vaan Chalkab Vida Vishchalki Pasindu Veda Chapatitanam Pavani Biyo Vaishnu Veda Biyo Namana Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pavani Tiananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasari Gaurvakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So they say uh, partial knowledge is dangerous because having partial knowledge, a person is not seeing the full picture and therefore acting foolishly. Um, they don't understand the science behind, for example, devotional service. They just understand it partially and therefore they make a lot of mistakes and create trouble from the, for themselves and others. So it's a problem. But we hear, we see here that also having full knowledge is dangerous <laughs> because <laughs> these people are Brahmins, Kshatriyas, that means they're knowledgeable people. But because um, they're not able to act on that knowledge, they also create trouble for themselves. So which one's better? <laughs> they're both not better. Be best is to um, have full knowledge and to act on that knowledge and not create problems for themselves or others. Like it says that the Brahmins, they drink, or the Brahmins' wives drink liquor, which is a nasty thing. Um, it's a nasty habit. And, uh, but it says that they do that and then they have to, they have to go to this hell. means they know that they shouldn't do it and then they continue to do it. Um, and it's a big problem worldwide, around America, around the whole world. People are very attached, addicted to this. It's a cheap and easy way to numb uh, a person's pain, right? Just drown themselves. So, and this is one of the principles that devotees have to follow, no intoxication. Um, it's, not, it's not a difficult one to follow. Um, but for some, it's not an easy one to follow. <laughs> uh, it, out of all the regulative principles, generally people have more trouble with that one than the. I mean, they have trouble with two of them. You could guess what the other one is, but um, but they have trouble with with uh, with with intoxication. A number of them, especially in Western countries. So. Um, but like living in the temple, for example, we're not really ask that like the, the temple's not really asking much. Practically, they're asking devotees to do five things: um, one, to attend the morning program fully, from beginning to end, not showing up late, not wandering all over the universe not shopping, um, not going to Ralph's or any other store. <laughs> means they have to, surrendering to Krishna means surrendering their intelligence also. Means um, if, if, the, if that which could have been bought yesterday was not bought yesterday, that means one is not acting intelligently. And just because 
like they have a saying, one shouldn't make one's, don't make your emergency my problem. Means somebody, I need this, I need this, I need this. Well, why didn't you tell me yesterday? <laughs> don't make your emergency my problem and I'm not doing it. You go to the store yourself. Sorry. So that's one thing, attending the morning program. Another thing is following the four regular principles, chanting 16 rounds. Another thing is reading Srila Prabhupada's books regularly. Another thing is, um, what else? There's two other things. Doing service. <laughs> so attending the morning program, doing service, following the regular principles, reading Srila Prabhupada's books. Taking prasadam, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes that's not so easy either. <laughs> so many nice restaurants around, you know. I know it sounds kind of funny, but <laughs> actually nice. But so, um, so yeah. But the, it's not asking much, um, and just to do these things. We see it's difficult for people. That's why Prabhupada said. I mean, so it's very simple, but it go over people's heads. And um, although it's so simple, people have a hard time doing it, and it's very unfortunate, even on those living in the temple. I mean, you've seen batches, batches, and batches, batches of brahmacharis just having a hard time following the basic things. Um, but to live in the temple means to strive to follow those and to understand the importance and, and just to do it. That's the principle of mind and sense control. And if we don't learn how to do these things, our advancement will be very slow. And um, we'll make bad householders, bad vanda processes, and bad sannyasis. <laughs> so we have to learn how to do these things, even though it's difficult. Um, I mean, there's been many times where I've been completely destroyed from going to sleep late. <laughs> um, on so many occasions, I, when I was up in LA and you know, driving down or I don't know, I was at somebody's house for a kirtan, and there's been so many times where I've just, but I've just suffered and got up and stayed up and, you know. So I know it's difficult, but um, certain things have to be done because to, to not do these things means to not really follow the program and it actually, other people suffer because of that. So, but here, so we have to know and then follow. That's the idea. Um, and there is room for mistakes, but we have to. We have. We can't make the mistake, or we can't make the the mistakes habits. That okay, this is just how I operate. It's like, hey, give me some slack. All right, well, you've been doing this for like months and years, and like, how, how much slack do you want? Now it's become a habit. It's not any more. Uh, it's not any more just some occasional thing. It's a habit now, so you got to break the habit. Um, and but if we don't try, then we'll never develop the spiritual strength, and we'll actually never be able to break the habit. Therefore, we need to try to, de and then we'll develop more strength, and we'll be able to break the habit. So, with these people who are struggling with intoxication, it's a similar principle that, or whatever they're struggling with, that they have to try understand the importance of it, and then um, apply themselves. And ultimately, everything is really resting on the mercy of the devotees. Um, so, all right, so we'll continue our tour of hell tomorrow. That's first part of the class. Now the second part. We're going to the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto. Uh, let's see here, one second. In other words, devotees have to plan how to, how to in most intelligent, like Prabhupada said, Prabhupada gave it to the responsibility to the devotees. He said, it is the duty of every devotee to mold their life in such a way that they could always remember Krishna and never forget him. That's the duty of devotees. It's not the temple president's duty. It's not the temple commander's duty. It's not your mother's duty. It's not Prabhupada's duty. It's your duty. You have to mold your life 
in such a way that you always remember Krishna, never forget him. That means planning intelligently to, to do nice sadhana, nice spiritual practice, and, and um, just fall in the program. And I understand it's difficult. <laughs> I'm not saying it's easy, but we have to strive to, to, to organize things properly. And we also need help from from people, uh, I don't know, maybe we should change, I mean, all of these late night programs we have, I mean, like, it's actually kind of unhealthy, you know, like eating so late, staying up so late, and then so many devotees leaving and not helping cleaning, um, and brahmacharis are staying up so late. I mean, a lot of temples, like yesterday, Tukaram Prabhun Laguna Beach, they had their event from 11 to 2 on a Saturday. Makes sense. <laughs> No one had to stay up late. No one had to, you know, all the stuff. So no one had to eat late. <laughs> anyways, maybe we should change things. We probably won't, but anyways. But we have to, if we can't change that, then I don't know, maybe some people who live outside, they should stay and, you know, help clean or let the brahmacharis go to sleep or something. I don't know. Something needs to be done. So, all right. So now, second part. <laughs> This is, so we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1. Canto 1 is titled first, uh, titled Creation. Chapter 1, Questions by the Sages, Text 1. So it's a little repetitive, but can everybody please repeat after me again. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, can you continue repeating? Um, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Chanmaradi Yasya Yato Vayad Itaratash. Charateshva Abhigya Surat Tene Brahma Shrida Ya Adi Kavaye Muyanti Yatsuryaha Tejavari Mirdam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargo Misha, Damna, Swena, Sada, Nirastakuhakam, Satyam, Param, Dimahi, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Janmadhyasya Yaton Vayadi Tarataschartesha Bhigyasurat, Tene Brahma Hridaya Adi Kavaye Muyanti Yatsuyaha. Tejo Vari Vari Madam Yatavin Mayo Yatrati Sargo Misha. Damna Swena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadya Siyaton Vayari Tarataschartesha Bhigyasarat Tene Brahma Hridaya Adika Vaye Muyanti Yatsuyaha Tejo Vari Madam Yatab in the Mayo Yatra Tisargo Misha. Damna Swain as a da Nerasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi. Damna Swain as a da Nerasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi. 
ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जन्मादस्यतोन्वयारितरतश्चातेश्वभिज्ञस्वरात्तेने ब्रह्महृदाय आदिकवये मूयन्ति यत्सो यह तेजो वारिमितम् यथाविन्मयो यत्र त्रिशर्गो मृषा दामना स्वयं सदाने रस्तकुह कम सत्यम् परम दीमहि Okay, we'll move on now. Om, O my Lord, Namaha, offering my obeisances, Bhagavate, under the personality of Godhead, Vasudevaya, unto Vasudev, the son of Vasudev, or Lord Sri Krishna, the primeval Lord, Janma Adi, Creation, sustenance, and destruction. Asya, of the manifested universes. Yataha, from whom? Anvayat, directly. Itarataha, indirectly. Cha, an. Arteshu, purposes. Abhigyaha, fully causing it. Co co cosniant, cognizant, sorat, fully independent, tene, imparted, brahma, the Vedic knowledge, shuddha, consciousness of the heart, yaha, one who, adi kavaye, unto the original created being, muyanti, are illusioned, yet about whom? Suryaha, great sages and demigods. Tejaha, fire. Vadi, water. Mridam, earth. Yata, as much as. Vinamayaha, action and reaction. Yatra, whereupon. Trisargaha, Three modes of creation, creative faculties, amrasha, almost factual, damna, along with all transcendental paraphernalia, swena, self-sufficiently, siddha, always, nirasta, negation by absence, kukam, illusion, satyam, truth. Param, absolute. Dimahi, 
I do meditate upon translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudev, O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations, and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the creation, by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Purport. Obeisances under the personality of Godhead Vasudev directly indicate Lord Sri Krishna, who is the divine son of Vasudev and Devaki. This fact will be more explicitly explained later in the text of this work. When Sri Vyasadev directly asserts that Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead and all others are his direct or indirect plenary portions or portions of the portion, period. Sri the Jiva Goswami has even more explicitly explained the subject matter in his Sandar Krishna Sandarbha. And Brahma, the original living be being, has explained the subject of Sri Krishna substantially in his treatise named Brahma Samhita. In an Upanishad in the Samaveda, it is also stated Lord Sri Krishna is the divine son of Devaki. Therefore, in this prayer, the first proposition holds that Lord Sri Krishna is the primeval Lord. And if, any, and if any transcendental nomenclature is to be understood as belonging to the absolute personality of Godhead, it must be the name indicated by the word Krishna, which means the all-attractive. In the Bhagavad Gita, in many places, the Lord asserts himself to be the original personality of Godhead. And this is confirmed by Jun, who cites great sages like Narada, Vyasa, and many others. In the Padma Purana, it is also stated that out of the innumerable names of the Lord, the name, of, the name Krishna is the principal one. Although the name Vasudev indicates the plenary portion of the personality of Godhead, and although all the different forms of the Lord being identical with Vasudev are thus indicated in this text, the name Vasudev particularly indicates Krishna, the divine son of Vasudev in Devaki. Sri Krishna is always meditated upon by the Paramahamsas, who are the perfected ones among those in the renounced order of life. Vasudeva, Lord Sri Krishna, is the cause of all causes. Everything that exists emanates from the Lord. How this is so explained, how this is so, is explained in, la in later chapters of this work. This work is described by Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya as the spotless Purana, because it contains the transcendental narration of the personality of God at Sri Krishna. The history of the Srimad Bhagavatam is also very glorious. It was compiled by Sri Vyasadeva after he had attained maturity in transcendental knowledge. He wrote this under the instructions of Sri Naradaji, his spiritual master. Vyasadeva compiled all Vedic literatures containing the four divisions of the Vedas, the Vedanta Sutras or the Brahma Sutras, the Puranas, the Mahabharata, and so on. But nevertheless, he was, not, he was not satisfied. His dissatisfaction was observed by his spiritual master, and thus Narada advised him to write on the transcendental activities of Lord Sri Krishna. These transcendental activities are described specifically in the Bhagavatam's 10th canto, which is considered its substance. But in order to reach the very substance, one must proceed gradually by developing knowledge of the categories. It is natural that a philosophical mind wants to know about the origin of the creation. At night he sees the stars in the sky, and he naturally speculates about their inhabitants. Such inquiries are natural for man because man has, developed, has a developed consciousness which is higher than that of the animals. The author of Srimad Bhagavatam gives a direct answer to such inquiries. He says that the Lord Sri Krishna is the origin of all creations. 
He is not only the creator of the universe, but the destroyer as well. The manifested cosmic nature is created at a certain period by the will of the Lord. It is maintained for some time, and then it, it is annihilated by his will. Therefore, the supreme will is behind all cosmic activities. Of course, there are atheists of various categories who do not believe in a creator, but that is due to a poor fund of knowledge. The modern scientist, for example, has created space satellites, and by some arrangement or other, these satellites are thrown into outer space to fly for some time at the control of the scientist who is far away. Similarly, all the universes with innumerable stars and planets are controlled by the intelligence of the personality of Godhead. In the Vedic literatures, it is said that the absolute truth personality of Godhead is the chief amongst all living personalities. All living beings, beginning from the first created being, Brahma, down to the smallest ant, are individual living beings. And above Rama, there are even other living beings with individual capacities. And the personality of Godhead is also a similar living being. And he is an individual, as are the other living beings. But the Supreme Lord, or the Supreme Living Being, has the greatest intelligence. And he possesses supermost inconceivable energies of all different varieties. If a man's brain can produce a space satellite, one can very easily imagine how brains higher than man can produce similarly wonderful things which are far superior. The reasonable person will easily accept this argument, but there are stubborn atheists who, will, who would never agree. Srila Vyasadeva, however, at once accepts the supreme intelligence as the Param Parameshvara. He offers his respectful obeisances under the supreme intelligence addressed as the para or the parameshvara or the supreme personality of godhead and that parameshvara is sri krishna as admitted in the bhagavad gita and other scriptures delivered by sri vyasadeva and specifically in the Srimad bhagavatam in the bhagavad gita the lord says that there is no other paratattva samam bonam than himself therefore sri vyasadeva at once worships the paratattva sri krishna unto whose transcendental activities are described in the tenth canto. Where is it? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Unto who? Sorry, I added that unto. Sorry about that. Shri Krishna, whose transcendental activities are described in the tenth canto. Unscrupulous persons go immediately to the tenth canto and especially to the five chapters which describe the Lord's rasa dance. This portion of the Srimad Bhagavatam is the most confidential part of this great literature. Unless one is thoroughly accomplished in the transcendental knowledge of the Lord, one is sure to misunderstood the Lord's worshipful transcendental pastimes called rasa dance and his loving affairs with the gopis. The subject matter is highly spiritual and only the liberated persons who have gradually attained to the stage of Paramahamsa can transcendentally relish the rasa dance. Srila Vyasadeva therefore gives the reader the chance to gradually develop spiritual realization before actually relishing the essence of the pastimes of the Lord. Therefore, he purposely invokes a Gayatri mantra, Dimahi. This Gayatri mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people. When one is successful in chanting the Gayatri mantra, he can enter into the transcendental position of the Lord. One must therefore acquire brahminical qualities or be perfectly situated in the quality of goodness in order to chant the Gayatri Mantra successfully and then to attain to the stage of transcendentally realizing the Lord, his name, his fame, his qualities, and so on. Srimad Bhagavatam is a narration of the sarup of, of the Lord manifested by his internal potency, and this potency is distinguished from the external potency which has manifested the cosmic world, which is within our experience. Srila Vyasadeva makes a clear distinction between the two in this shloka. Srila Vyasadeva says herein that the manifested internal potency is real, whereas the external manifested energy in the form of material existence is only temporary and illusory, like the mirage in the desert. In the desert mirage, there's no actual water. There's only the appearance of water. Real water is somewhere else. The manifested cosmic creation appears as reality, but reality of which that it, this is but a shadow is in the spiritual world. Absolute truth is in the spiritual sky, not the material sky. 
In the material sky, everything is relative truth. That is to say, one truth depends on something else. This cosmic creation results from interaction of the three modes of nature, and the temporary manifestations are so created as to present an illusion of reality to the bewildered mind of the conditioned soul, who appears in so many species of life, including the higher demigods like Brahma, Indra, Chandra, and so on. In actuality, there is no reality in the manifested world. There appears to be reality, however, because of the true reality which exists in the spiritual world, where the personality of God eternally exists with his transcendental paraphernalia. The chief engineer of a complicated construction does not personally take part in the construction, but he knows every nook and corner because everything is done under his direction. He knows everything about the construction, both directly and indirectly. Similarly, the personality of Godhead, who is the supreme engineer of this cosmic creation, knows every nook and corner, all the affairs are apparently being carried out by the demigods. By demigods. Beginning from Brahma down to the insignificant ant, no one is independent in the matter of material creation. The hand of the Lord is seen everywhere. All material elements as well as all spiritual sparks emanate from him only, and whatever is created in the material world is but the interaction of two energies. The material and the spiritual, which emanate from the absolute truth, the personality of God, Sri Krishna. A chemist can manufacture water in the chemical laboratory by mixing hydrogen and oxygen, but in reality, the living entity works in the laboratory under the direction of the Supreme Lord. And the materials with which he works are also supplied by the Lord. The Lord knows everything directly and indirectly, and he is cog cognizant of all min minute details, and he is fully independent. He is compared to a mine of gold. And the cosmic creations in so many different forms are compared to objects made from the gold, such as gold rings, necklaces, and so on. The gold ring and the gold necklace are qualitatively one with the gold in that mine, but qu quantitatively the gold in the mine is different. Therefore, the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different. Nothing is absolutely equal with the absolute truth, but at the same time, nothing is independent of the absolute truth. Conditioned souls, beginning from Brahma, who engineers the entire universe down to the insignificant ant, are all create, creating, but none of them are independent of the Supreme Lord. The materialists wrongly think that there is no creator other than his own self. This is called maya, or illusion. Because of his poor fund of knowledge, the materialist cannot see beyond the purview of his imperfect senses. And thus he thinks that matter automatically takes its own shape without the aid of a superior intelligence. This is refuted in the shloka by Srila Vyasadeva. Since the complete whole, or the absolute truth, is the source of everything, nothing can be independent of the body of the absolute truth. Whatever happens to the body quickly becomes known to the embodied. Similarly, the creation is the body of the absolute whole. Therefore, the absolute knows everything directly and indirectly that happens in the creation. Okay, so we have some more paragraphs. <laughs> so we'll continue. One of Prabhupada's longer purports. In the Bhagavatam. In the Shruti Mantra, it is also stated that the Absolute Whole, or Brahman, is the ultimate source of everything. Everything emanates from Him, and everything is maintained by Him. At the end, everything enters into Him. That is the law of nature. In the Smriti Mantra, the same is confirmed. It is said there that the source from which everything emanates at the beginning of Brahma's millennium and the reservoir to which everything ultimately enters is the absolute truth, or Brahman. Materialist, material scientists take it for granted that the ultimate source of the planetary system is the sun, but they are unable to explain the source of the sun. Herein, the ultimate source is explained. According to the Vedic literature, Brahma is the creator of this universe, yet he had to meditate to get inspiration for such creation. Therefore, neither Brahma nor the sun is the ultimate creator. It is stated in this shloka that Brahma was taught Vedic knowledge by the personality of Godhead. One may argue that Brahma, being the original living being, could not be inspired because there was no other being living at that time. Herein it is stated that the Supreme Lord inspired the secondary creator Brahma in order that Brahma could carry out his creative functions. So the supreme intelligence behind all creations is the absolute Godhead, Sri Krishna. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna states that he is only that it is he only who superintends the creative energy, prakriti, which constitutes the totality of matter. Therefore, Srila Vyasadeva does not worship Brahma, 
but the Supreme Lord who guides Brahma in his creative activities. In this shloka, the particular words abhigya, ha, and surat are significant. These two words distinguish the Supreme Lord from all other living be entities. No other living entity is either abhigya or surat. That is, no, uh, no one is either fully cognizant or fully independent. So that's the qualification of Krishna. That's a qualification of being the Supreme Personality of Godhead of God to be fully cognizant and fully independent. Even Brahma has to meditate upon the Supreme Lord in order to create. Then what to speak of great scientists like Einstein? The brains of such a scientist are certainly not the products of any human being. Scientists cannot manufacture such a brain. And what to speak of foolish atheists who defy the authority of the Lord? Even Mayavadi and personalists who flatter themselves that they can become one with the Lord are neither abhigya nor surat. They're not cog fully cognizant and they're not fully independent. Such impersonalists undergo severe austerities to acquire knowledge to become one with the Lord. But ultimately they become dependent on some rich disciple who supplies them with money to build monasteries and temples. Atheists like Ravana or Hiranyakashipu had to undergo severe penances before they could flout the authority of the Lord. But ultimately they were rendered helpless and could not save themselves when the Lord appeared before them as cruel death. This is also the case with the modern atheists who, are, who also dare to flout the authority of the Lord. Such atheists will be dealt with similarly, for history repeats itself. Whenever men neglect the authority of the Lord, nature and her laws are there to penalize them. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita and in the well-known verse, yada yada hidharmasya glani. Whenever there is a decline of dharma and a rise of adharma, O Arjun, then I incarnate myself, Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 7, that the Supreme Lord is all-perfect is confirmed in all Shruti mantras. It is said in the Shruti mantras that the all-perfect Lord threw a glance over matter and thus created all living beings. The living beings are part and parcels of the Lord, and He impregnates the vast material creation with seeds of spiritual sparks. And thus the creative energies are set in motion to enact so many wonderful creations. An atheist may argue that God is no more expert than a watchmaker. But of course, God is greater because He can create machines and duplicate male and female forms. So... And you never saw a watch do that, right? <laughs> the male and female forms of different types of machineries go on producing innumerable similar machines without God's further attention. If a man could manufacture such a set of machines that could produce other machines without his attention, then he could approach the intelligence of God. But that is not possible, for each machine has to be handled individually. Therefore, no one can create as well as God. Another name for God is Asamudva which means that no one is equal to or greater than him. Param Satyam, or the Supreme Truth, is he who has no equal or superior. This is confirmed in the Shruti Mantras. It is said that before the creation of the material universe, there existed the Lord only, who is master of everyone. That Lord instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge. That Lord also, that Lord has to be obeyed in all respects. Anyone who wants to get rid of the material entanglement must surrender unto him. This is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. And thus one surrenders into the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, it is certain that he will be bewildered. When an intelligent man surrenders into the lotus feet of Krishna and knows completely that Krishna is the cause of all causes, as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, then only can such an intelligent man become a Mahatma or great soul. But such a great soul is rarely seen. Only the Mahatmas can understand that the Supreme Lord is the primeval cause of all creations. He is Parama or ultimate truth, because all of the truth is relative, or relative to him. He is omniscient. For him there is no illusion. Some Mayavadi scholars argue that Srimad Bhagavatam was not compiled by Srila Vyasadeva. And some of them suggest that this book is a modern creation written by someone named Vopadeva. In order to refute such meaningless arguments, Srila Sridhar Swami points out that there is reference to the Bhagavatam in many of the oldest Puranas. This first shloka of the Bhagavatam begins with the Gayatri Mantra. There is reference to this in the Matsya Purana, which is the oldest Purana. In that Purana it is said about the Bhagavatam that in it there are many narrations of spiritual instructions, that it begins with the Gayatri Mantra and that it contains the history of Vritrasura. 
Anyone who makes a gift of this great work on a full moon day attains to the highest perfection of life by returning to Godhead. There is reference to the Bhagavatam and other Puranas also, where it is clearly stated that this work was finished in 12 cantos, which include 18,000 shlokas. In the Padma Purana also, there is reference to the Bhagavatam in a conversation between Gautama and Maharaj Ambarish. The king was advised therein to read regularly Srimad Bhagavatam if he desired liberation from material bondage. Under the circumstances, there is no doubt about the authority of the Bhagavatam. Within the past 500 years, many erudite scholars and acharyas like Jiva Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Vishnath Chakravarti, Vallabha Acharya, and many other distinguished scholars, even at the, after the time of Lord Chaitanya, made elaborate commentaries on the Bhagavatam. And the serious student would do well to attempt to go through them to better relish the transcendental messages. Sri Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur specifically deals with the original and pure sex psychology, Adi Ras, devoid of all mundane inebriety. The whole material creation is moving under the principle of sex life. It's all yes, it's italicized. Yes, this is, this is italicized, this sentence Srivita Prabhu is mentioning, which I'll read again. The whole material creation is moving under the principles of sex life. Period. In modern civilization, sex life is the focal point for all activities. Whether, wherever one turns his face, he sees sex life predominant. Therefore, sex life is not unreal. Its reality is experienced in the spiritual world. The material sex life is but a perverted reflection of the original fact. The original fact is an absolute truth, and thus the absolute truth cannot be impersonal. It is not possible to be imper impersonal and contain pure sex life. It is not possible to be impersonal and contain pure sex life. Consequently, the impersonalist philosophers have given direct, indirect impetus to the abominable mundane sex life because they have overstressed the impersonality of the ultimate truth. Consequently, man without information of the actual spiritual form of sex has accepted perverted material sex life as the all in all. There is a distinction between sex life and the disease material condition and spiritual sex, sex life. This Srimad Bhagavatam will gradually elevate the un, unabi, unbiased reader to the highest professional stage of transcendence. It will enable him to transcend the three modes of material activities, fruit of action, speculative philosophy, and worship of functional deities as inculcated in Vedic verses. This ends the purport. Om Ajnana Tivaranda Sya Kananjana Shalakaya Chakshula Malitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namha Mukam Karitva Chalam Pangam Langai Tegrim Yakripata Maham Bande Shri Gurundiri Tadunam Banchal Kapadur Vishta Kripasin Bebe Chapati Tanam Pavani Bhu Vaishnavi Buddha Manamaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Tananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so here the author is offering his respectful obeisances unto uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, unto Krishna, um, son of Vasudev, so very specific, <laughs> right? And Krishna is explained in three lines of this uh, purport, or specific of this verse. Janmad uh, the, the origin, first of all, he's the origin of all emanations. So Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead from whom all other living entities um, emanate. Or Ishvara Parama Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Nadir Adir Govinda Sarvakarna Karnam. So he's the cause of all causes. Uh, and as Srila Prabhupada would comment, he would say at times that if you want to know something of God, then you, then you could study, one could study oneself. In other words, as, as uh, also stated with another uh, book, such as the Bible said, man was made in the image of God. Now, of course, as it's been stated here within the purport, that we have similar things that Krishna has, but 
in a um, minute quality, whereas Krishna has it in, um, in an unlimited way. Whereas the examples given of uh, the ocean, if you take a drop from the ocean, you'll understand what's in the ocean. But the drop is obviously <laughs> is nowhere near the quantity of, of the ocean. So we may have some qualities of Krishna, but not in full. Uh, and as was mentioned in this purport, there's two particular qualities that were mentioned that Krishna has. Uh, Svarat and Abhigyaha, which means Abhigyaha means he is fully cognizant. And Svarat means he's fully independent. And we see that although people may claim to be God, people may claim to be one with God, people may ex uh, accept other, their gurus to be God and so on, but where is this quality of Svarat and ab Abhigyaha? Are they fully cognizant? <laughs> no. <laughs> right? Are they surat? Are they fully independent? No, they're not. So how can they claim to be God? Therefore, this is a fallacy. Similarly, the material scientists, they may, means atheistic material scient materialistic scientists, they may be very proud of their creations and their intelligence and so on. And they may say, oh, God, what did God, even if there was a God, it's just like he created this world and it's just like a watch, right? It just ticks and that's it. But as Srila Prabhupada's mentioned in the purport, um, he creates in such a way as where without his, um, for example, he gives example, a watch, there's not a male watch and a female watch and they can bind and then they produce children. It just doesn't happen like that. But, <laughs> but there are, the human, the male body and the female body, and through um, marriage, you know, religious marriage and, and, and family life, right, procreation, and they create children, offspring. And Prabhupada's saying that if a man or a scientist was to create such a machine, such as the body, they would, uh, they would be able to, you could say, create like like in, in a similar way as, as God is creating, but they can't do that. They just can't do that. So and in the beginning of the purport, Srila Prabhupada's mentioning also how within the purport, Srila Prabhupada's mentioning how the human the human mind has a tendency a tendency to be inquisitive. We want to know. Humans want to know. Just like if someone has a, a son Right? The son is asking their father, Oh, father, what is this? What is this? What is that? Right? They're always asking, always curious. Um, but an animal, an animal, any, 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 any animal, they cannot ask such questions. They don't ask, you don't see them inquiring into the absolute truth or into anything really. They're just concerned with four things. Eating, where is food? Sleeping, where can I find a peaceful place to sleep? Um, mating, where can I find a mate? Right, and uh, defending—that's what they're—that's what they're concerned with. It doesn't go beyond that. Um, so, so a a, a human uh, a human being. Um, they are meant to inquire into the absolute truth, and for that they need to inquire into into a, a, a they need to inquire from a proper authority. Um, I mean, and, and if we want to do anything, we have to inquire from a, from a proper authority, as has been mentioned a number of times in these classes. But we'll mention again, <laughs> like Prabhupada was. One of, he asked one of his disciples to cut a mango nicely and distribute it to people, right? And he was making a mess, because <laughs> if you don't know how to make, cut a mango properly, you're going to make a mess. 
so then one one lady uh, who was there, she she said, "Oh, let me. Uh, I could take it from here. I, I'll, I'll cut it. No problem." So then she grabbed it, and then she, right, cut, cut, and then you have a half there, and then you cut like this and cut like this, right? Those of you who know <laughs> know the science, you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't, you could watch somebody later who does know, but. Uh, and then you just you know go like that, and then there's nice uh, cubes, and then you, you know, it's easy. And then Sri Prabhupada said, "Just see," he said, "even for cutting a mango, one needs a guru, one needs a teacher." <laughs> so such a simple thing. Um, what to speak of more complex things, such as spiritual life. So we need to approach a proper authority. Uh, and that should be our our business. We we we, sh we we should approach authority or a guru, like Sri Prabhupada says. D does does should everyone approach a guru? He asked that his disciples that. Should everyone approach a guru? And what do you think Sri Prabhupada said? Anyone want to say here? Yes. Who says yes? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then Prabhupada said. Prab Prabhupada said, no, not everybody should approach a guru. Should only, only those who are serious to understand the absolute truth, only those who, who want God realization, they should approach a guru. Others should not. Because you approach the guru for wrong reasons. So, of course, generally we think everyone should approach a guru, right? That's the ultimate, anyways. So, so that should be our business, inquiry into the Absolute Truth. And, and the Srimad Bhagavatam explains what is the Absolute Truth systematically through the cantos, going to the 10th canto, which is the essence of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna's pastimes. Uh, so, kamasya indriya prithir labo jivira yavataha jivyas, jiv, jivasya tattva jigyasya narto yashchet the karma bihi. That uh, life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification, gratifying the senses, but they should be, in, but but they should be um, directed towards inquiry to the absolute truth, and and that should be one's only business, inquiry into the absolute truth. So, and as Srila Prabhupada brings up in that purport of that particular verse, he says that sometimes. People wonder how devotees are able to be so detached, so renounced from so many things of this world. And then Sri the Prabhupada brings up in that purport a very important point for those who are wondering how are these people able to be so detached. And for those who want to be detached, <laughs> it's a very important point. And the point that he makes is that the devotees or the transcendentalists are so busy engaged in research into the absolute truth, that they don't have any time for these things, unimportant things. Or Srila Prabhupada, he was so busy writing his purports, he was so busy spreading the glories of Krishna, he didn't have any time for anything else. And that's how devoted, they don't have any time for anything else. It means that which shouldn't be given time in the first place, unimportant things or illusion. Uh, so, but unfortunately, people do not inquire into the absolute truth, or they inquire, but they don't inquire to the right authorities. They inquire to all these authorities who propound philosophies that are just atheistic, and that ultimately have, have uh, you could say, um, ho holes in the philosophy, or their particular... Um, stance. Uh, like for example, one time uh, apparently some man won an award for proving or maybe close to proving that, that uh, life does not come from life but life comes from matter. It's no need for God, no need for this, you know, religious stuff. Just, you know, accept it. One life, no afterlife. 
there's a beginning of the body, there's the end of the body, no heaven, no hell, just enjoy, right? Eat, sleep, what is it not eat, sleep? Eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy, for tomorrow you should die. So just get as much as possible. So this particular person won some award. <laughs> That's Kali Yuga, right? <laughs> you, 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 you win award for such things. <laughs> so then Bhakti Shrupa Damodar Goswami, Srila Prabhupada's dear disciple, warrior, <laughs> spiritual scientist, he, he approached this person. Prabhupada, actually, Bhakti Shrupa Damodar Goswami was quite, he was quite a fighter, actually. But he approached this person and he said, so, if I give you the chemicals that, that you say is, that, that, that produces life, can you produce life? And the man said, no, can't do that. So, okay, well, what, what, you know, what's, you're saying that this is producing life, then produce life. Well, I can't do that. We're working on it, right? Or as Prabhupada said, post-dated check, right? In the future. This is post-dated check. Um, so... So Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and he said, also states in Bhagavad Gita, aham uh, sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam pravatate, that those who are intelligent, Buddha, those who are intelligent, what do they do? They worship Krishna. Aham sarvasya prabhava, everything emanates from me, Krishna says. Uh, and those who are intelligent, they, they engage fully in Krishna consciousness. Um, so the more we're able to understand uh, the glories of Krishna, the more we'll be very happy and enthusiastic and um, determined to, to serve Krishna. Because understanding, right, they say sometimes about people, to know him is to love him. <laughs> right? Means that if you... If you know this person, then you have to love him. It's the same with Krishna. The more we're able to know him in full, janma karma chamedivyamayvam yogati tattvata, in, in truth, then the more we'll be enthusiastic and determined to serve him. Same with Srila Prabhupada. The more we know him in truth, the more we'll be enthusiastic to serve him. Um, same with devotees. Say, hey, well, I know, I know devoting truth, and I'm not so enthusiastic to serve him. <laughs> we should serve all devotees. Um, we serve devotees in different ways. And there's different levels of devotees. Like I mentioned recently, there was some person who was very discouraged from interacting with a particular devotee, and they asked His Holiness Giraj Swami, about this, and it was actually a wife talking about her husband, how he was very discouraged encountering some devotee. And, this, and, and then based on this interaction, this husband's visit to Vrindavan was completely spoiled, and he was very discouraged. So then His Holiness Giraj Swami gave an interesting answer. He said, he said, well, you, you should explain to your husband that there's different levels of devotees. And based on this interaction, which we were not getting into the details now of it right now, but based on this interaction, interaction it seems that that this this devotee is is a kanishta adhikari or a materialistic devotee, means the, the, the devotee on the lowest level. So you should tell your husband not to base not to base his um, experience or faith on such interactions. So. But to, anyways, but to know Krishna means to love him. Um, and the more we're able to know Krishna, the more our lives um, will become perfect. So everything is very clearly outlined in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, of course, we could say many more things on this particular verse and purport. I mean, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that he spoke, I believe, for a month on this particular verse. So we could speak for a long time, um, but there is a time limit on this particular class. Um, and also, we could speak a lot on Prabhupada's purport, because Prabhupada, 
it's quite a lengthy purport. But these are some uh, thoughts in relation to this purport. And yes, if we just apply ourselves, means if we hear Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smarana, if we just hear Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Siddha Kabanoi Shravanada Shuddha Chitta Koridoi, that this love for Krishna is within our within everyone's hearts. And by the process of hearing and chanting about Krishna, this this awakens. So if we just lend our ears and open our minds, you could say, or open our hearts to the message of the Bhagavatam, it will cleanse. Srinvatam Sukata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana. It says that Krishna will cleanse personally. And then we will go through the different stages of getting closer to love for Krishna and Arta Nivritti and all these different stages uh, heading to pure love for Krishna. Okay, so I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.